Welcome to the first episode of Ask Keith Mills. I'm really chuffed that you've taken the time to send in some questions. Let's get cracking. First one is from Alex B. He says, when he plays his music to his friends, the thing he hears the most is that it's too digital. It's entirely in the box and he's got no hardware around. So very, very quick tip for you on this one. There are some awesome plugins out there that are tape emulations or console emulations. Some of my favorites are from Sonomous really good value they do uh, one called satsum one called briston which you just chuck one of the plugins on each of your tracks and then they've got another special one that goes on the master out or any groups and buses that you've got um, another great uh, console em emulation sorry is by slate digital which is a little bit ironic in the name there it does exactly the same thing the vcc um, and slate also does a fantastic tape emulation so check them out i'm recommending them because they're super quick you chuck them on your track and honestly the difference that you're going to hear with a minimum of effort is absolutely amazing so second question is from my man eddie a Eddie says he's never satisfied with his tracks. Do I have a philosophy on finishing art? Well, I've got to say to you, I've never met any producer, any author, any artist that is ever completely satisfied with their art. In fact, there's a very famous saying, I can't remember who says it now, it's one of the quotes we use on our Facebook page, which is, art is never finished, it's only abandoned. So if you're struggling to actually finish your tunes because you're not satisfied, it's saying to me you're probably a perfectionist. And I totally get that. It's something I suffer with a lot myself. There are a couple of things that I always focus on. One is the saying, good is good enough. You've got to get it out the door. Good is good enough. And the other is something I work by with my music, which is the 70% rule. If something is 70% good enough at any stage, I move on. It's only when I get to the end, I might just let that creep up a tiny bit, but I never ever aim for perfection. And I'm gonna finish this with a little story for you. One of my best, best friends is a guy called Chris Page. He's a fantastic techno producer. If you're into techno, check him out. He tells me a story about one of the tracks that he finished. It was his least favorite. It was the one he was least satisfied with, and it's gone on to be one of his biggest hits. So just bite the bullet, get your music out there, and let other people be the judge. Okay, so the final question today is from Josip V. Josip is finding that mixing bass is the most difficult for him. He's heard that the correct volume to mix at is 85 dB, but if that is the case, he wants to know, should he add a sub to his setup of his studio monitors? Hi Josip, so you're absolutely right. 80 to 85 dB is what's recommended. This is because it's where we perceive all the frequencies at their flattest. So this is the Fletcher Munson curve that you may have heard of before. So it's a reasonably low level, providing you're not sitting too close to your mixers, um, to your monitors, sorry. We do occasionally turn it up to hear how the track sounds when it's kicking, but it is a good level to mix at. Now, when it comes to the idea of getting a sub, I think more important than that is to make sure that you are measuring your room because a sub might be causing you more problems than you've already got. It may be reasonably ineffective if you've got massive peaks and nulls. The software that I use that I really recommend for this is by a company called Sonarworks. It's called Reference 3. It's absolutely fantastic and it'll probably do more for you than adding a sub wheel it's difficult to say because I don't know how far down into the base frequencies your existing monitors go already but if they go pretty deep I'd say getting that software and then potentially adding some kind of treatment to your room would be more effective than getting a sub final bit of advice make sure that you're referencing all of your mixes to tracks that you really admire. And I would say, don't just do that on your monitors, do that on your headphones, your car stereo, your hi-fi, annoy your neighbors, it doesn't matter, but get it checked on as many different systems as you can. Okay guys, so I hope that's helped you out. And everyone else who's listening, I hope you found something useful in there. Remember, if you've got a question, I'd love to hear it, I'd love to help you out. It can be technical, it can be creative. Fire it over to me, it's hashtag 
Ask Keith Mills on Twitter and Instagram, or underneath this video, you'll find a contact form. See you next Wednesday. Until then, take care. <laughs>